The Goldstone Report was a, of course you've rejected it and so on, but, uh, and uh, Netanyahu said that uh, it could devastate the peace process. Was that because the condemnations of Israel were so strong? Was that why it was going to devastate the peace process? Let's start with what the Goldstone Report is. You know, Judge Goldstone himself probably made the most damning statement about his own report and in an interview in a New York newspaper called The Forward uh, in early October. He said, and I quote, if this were a court of law, there would have been nothing proven. Because he is a judge and because the um, Goldstone process looked like a legal process, one assumes that Israel has been judged by an international body and has been found guilty. It was a fact-finding commission. Um, witnesses who came forward were not cross-examined. And there's enough proof out there to show that some of the testimony that Goldstone's people heard was not accurate. In fact, contradicts statements by Hamas or by Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Now, I think what Prime Minister Netanyahu had in mind was that if Israel withdraws from territory, takes risks for peace, when terrorist organizations have not been dismantled in those areas, Israel's forced into military operations to defend its civilians who've been hit by rocket fire repeatedly. And then Israel is judged by some international body created by the Human Rights Council. What does that say to the people of Israel about taking further risks for peace? That undermines the whole foundations of the peace process. But did there need to be things like deliberately attacking civilians, firing white phosphorus shells, torture, and all those things? Or, to put it very simply, in a 1,400 deaths on one side, 13 on the other? Well, you know, the asymmetry in the numbers of casualties does not prove the justice of a position. I'm sure you could find battles in World War II uh, where German cities suffered greater casualties uh, than uh, cities on the Allied side. But that doesn't prove that the Germans were right and the Allies were wrong in the Second World War. Um, I think a lot of these accusations about Israel, about intentionally shooting civilians, are simply unfair and wrong. We have a problem with Goldstone, for example. He says, you've killed non-combatants. And there was a huge controversy over Palestinian policemen who um, Israel killed in an airstrike, approximately 89 individuals. And Goldstone says these were non-combatants. These were hinting like they're traffic cops. Well, actually, analysts who worked for me in my research institute, the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, went down the list of the names of every Palestinian policeman who were killed in that battle. We found 91% were associated, were members of active combat units of Hamas, like the Isil Din al-Qassam brigades, and other units as well. So to say these people were non-combatants is simply wrong, and I think Goldstone didn't do his homework. On the other hand, Goldstone ha has a, an env he's Jewish, so he was not That's irrelevant to me. I don't care if he's Buddhist, Hindu, or Muslim. But he has a fantastic reputation for what he's achieved in the past, and it would be unlikely that he got things as wrong as you suggest. Well, one would be surprised that he got things as wrong as, as, as I'm suggesting, but in fact he did. His commission was set up by the um, UN Human Rights Council, which has a terrible record on dealing with Israel. It disproportionately deals with Israel, ignoring human rights abuses around the world. And um, it actually manufactured a resolution which judged Israel in the very questions that were asked. Uh, about um, the actions in that uh, military operation. It prejudged the outcome by asking questions that already determined that Israel had violated the law.